Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to solve coding question for Infosys SPDSE role. So there we are going to solve some previous year coding questions and without further ado, let's get started. So first thing first, before we start with the questions, so there are 30 plus companies are going to hire this placement season. So make sure all the links that we have given for our social media handles are given in the description of the video. You can follow them so that you will get all the updated information regarding these hirings. Also, there will be a top three commenters we are going to pick from this video. So if you uh, that you will get the Prime Minister Prime subscription for free of cost. All right. So without further ado, let's get started with the question that we have for the round. All right. So here we have. OK, so the question that we have is Vale is very well known how much he loves uh, the Bitwise XOR operation. Well, uh, Keto is well known for how much he loves with the sum number. So basically doing the sum operation on the numbers. OK. Then uh, their friend Resley decided to make up a problem that would enjoy both of them. So basically it's going to combine the problem statement of finding the bitwise XOR operation and also performing the sum of the numbers. So the equation that we have, so basically the formula which is called as XOR operation is something like this where we are going to perform the XOR operation on the value of X and the one value from the element of any array that is given. So basically we are going to find it with the first element, second element, third element, fourth element and given the n number of elements that will be there in the array and at the end we need to find the maximum sum value that is going to be there. So basically what we are going to find given this equation is that can you find the integer x in the range of given the value 0 to k with the maximum x or some value of with that value of the x. So what we are going to do is this is the formula that we need to solve for given the value of the x which where we are going to get the maximum value of the x. So we are going to get the maximum value of the x in the input. We are need to iterate from 0 to this max value on all the respective x values and we need to apply this formula so that we need to find at with which value of the x this sum is going to be maximum. So let's say starting from the iterating the value 0, 1, 2, 3 until the end of the maximum value that we have, we are going to find one value where we may get the maximum sum of the x or that's what it is expected in the question. So let's have a look at some of the constraints that are given here. So what is the input format that we have? So the first line contains integer n denoting the number of elements in the A. Let's say it says either it could be like three elements, four elements, five elements in the array. Then the next line contains the integer k denoting the maximum value of x. So that is what exactly the value of k is noting the maximum value of the x that we are going to find. Then each line of i of the n subsequent lines where like 0 is less than i less than equal to n contains the integer describing a of i. This is nothing but the array that we are going to get for the length of given n in the question. Okay. So let's have a look at one sample input first so that we will understand how exactly uh, we are going to solve this and how we are supposed to write the code for this as well. So here we go. This is the uh, some basic sample uh, input sample that we have this n value representing the length of the array. As we can see, there are like three elements that we have the value of k representing like maximum value of x, which is nothing but seven. So that we are going to iterate from zero to six for this value and why we are going to iterate what we are going to find with this. Let's have a look at it. So given the value of this array and if you remember the formula that we had for x value which is like x of x or and uh, we have like a of 1 and this formula we have till the summation of all the length of the n value. So basically here we have to perform that three times and the sample output that we have is a 14. We need to find how we got the value as 14. So first what we need to do is we need to consider like we need to iterate upon the value of this range of x from 0 to 6. Here we need to find the value of x. So we will put all the values of 0 to 6 in all the iterations and then we will figure out at which value of the x we got the maximum x or sum. So what exactly we are going to do is let's say 
given the we need to perform the XOR on this A1 and uh, plus A of 2, A of 3, A of 4. So initially, let's say here we define X value is 0. Okay, uh, considering the X value as 0, if you look at the formula of sum of XOR of X that is given, so we need to perform this 0 XOR 1 plus we need to do 0 XOR. Uh, the next value that we have is 6. So here I am picking the value and plus we need to perform 0, x or and uh, 3. So once we individually calculate these values, the sum that we get that we are going to store in the sum of x or value. Okay, so considering the x value initially is 0, then we are going to iterate this value from 0 to 6, all this iteration. How to perform the XOR value? So XOR is nothing but first we need to convert them into the binary, then we need to perform that operation. So basically what we are going to do is for 0, this is going to be 3 times 0, uh, 1 in a binary we can represent like 0, 0, 1. Okay. And also I will write a respect of here as well. So these are like 3 times 0 and uh, 6 is represented by double 1, 0. Then uh, we are going to do this as well. So we will calculate this one by one. First, uh, let me write this in a binary form. So this is going to be 3 times 0 and 3 is represented as 0, 1, 1. Okay, this is what we have. So how to perform the XOR operation? So XOR operation is simple. If the both the bits are same, then we will write it as 0. If the both the bits are different, then it will be the value is going to be 1. So in that case, the both the uh, bits are different like 0 and 1, it will be 1 rest it will be 0 0 here also we will have uh, both the bits are same so first value will be 0 then 1 1 again here both the bits are different so it will be 1 here it will be 1 here it will be 0 so we, that's what we do XOR operation so if you look at it what is the answer that we get this is the value that we have 1 this represents 6 this represents 3 so we are going to add 1 plus 6 plus 3 the answer that we get is 10. So what is the answer here that we have is if the x value is 0 then the sum of xor operation that we are going to get as 10. So now in the next iteration we will update the value of x as 1 and here we will make the changes. So this changes we are going to make and then we will perform the operation then instead of 10 we might get the different value here. Similarly, we are going to perform this operation till all the values of x from 0 to 6 and out of which the maximum value, the sum that we are going to get, that we are going to pick and then we are going to return at with which value we got that sum. So here the maximum sum that we are going to get is 14 for the x value being 4. So what you can do is you can carry the same operation, take a pen and paper, write it down and then you will get to know this easily. So here we have to perform all the iterations. So the same steps are going to be there. It's just that you need to perform all the calculation manually. Okay. So before we look at the solution of this question, let's look at like how uh, you can practice most questions, something like this. Okay. So if you want to practice more questions like this that we have explained in the question, so you can check this page or the link is given in the video where you can find like Infosys coding questions and answers for SP and DSC role. Here you will find all the questions and answers on like different programming language as well Java, Python and C++. So here you will get the questions and the link for this is given in the description of the video. All right. So now uh, let's jump to the code part here. So let's see how we can solve with this. Okay, so here we have let's go line by line and let's try to understand what exactly we are doing here. So this is the input that uh, we are taking for uh, another sample input that was given here. So the value of n is going to be 4. So that means the number of elements are going to be in array are 4. The value of k represents the maximum value of the x which is going to be 9. So here we will iterate from 0 to 8 only. Okay, so after that, this is the array that we have and we are going to call the function x or sum and initially we have like since we are going to find the maximum value of that. So we will define the sum of the array as x or sum and then we will go with the for loop. We will iterate upon the value of i from the range of 1 to k. So basically starting from the value of 1 to all the value of that and we will define the value of s initially that is the sum that we are going to get 
as zero. In that, we are going to pick the for loop and where the j value, we are going to perform the operation from each element that we are going to get. Because if you remember the formula, in order to find uh, like all the XOR sum of all the elements, I need to iterate upon each value of that because I need to perform XOR of 7, XOR X with XOR of 7, X with XOR of 4, X with XOR of 0, X with XOR of 3. So that's what we are going to do with this for loop. We are going to pick one by one value. Here we are going to perform that operation. So this, uh, uh, the symbol that is represented as a XOR operation, I and the J value. And if we check if the S value is greater than the XOR sum, in that case, we will update the XOR sum value and then we will return the XOR sum. So that is what we are going to get into this. So let's execute this file and see what is the output that we get here. Okay, so given this input that we have here, we are going to get the output as the 46. If you want to change the input with the previous example, that also we will do it here. Okay, so let me just, uh, so the n value that we had 3, the k value was uh, 7 and the array that was given was 1, 6 and 3. Let me just 1, 6, 3. Now here we will try to find this. All right, so if you look at it, that the maximum value that we have is a 14. So here, basically, you need to perform this operations by pen, uh, taking the pen. So then only it will be easy for you to understand how exactly these things are happening. Even though when you're writing the code, it is simply going to be the for loop that we are going to update. All right, so, and we will see the next question in a while. All right, so here we have another question. So basically here, a sub array of A is a segment of contiguous, uh, elements of array a given an array of a of n elements you can apply the following operation as many times as you like so basically there's an array that is given and uh, you have to perform some of the operations on that array given at choosing a sub array and subtracting one from each element at the sub array let's say we have element of uh, if we have an array of length four so we are going to select a sub array out of that element and we are going to subtract one from each element of that and the cost of this operation is let's say given as a x the value of the x is going to be a cost of operation that we are going to have second we are going to choose an index i such that a of i is a positive and setting a of i as zero and uh, the cost of this operation is one uh, is y so the y value that we will get so what is the task that we have is your task is to make all the elements equal to zero find the minimum cost to do so. So given that we are going to perform two operations on given an array. One is selecting a sub array and subtracting one from each of that element. Then the second given or uh, selecting one specific index or uh, index at the value and we are going to assign that as a zero. Okay. So these are the two operations that we are going to do. And for the first operation you need to perform there's a going to be a cost of that operation which is denoted by the x for the second operation there is going to be a cost which is denoted by the y so what exactly you have to do is you have your task is to make all the elements equal to zero and find the minimum cost to do so okay so let's have a look at it now uh, what is the input format format that we have is the first line contains the integer n that denoting the number of elements in the a then the next line contains the integer x that denoting the cost of the first operation. Then we have the value y, which denotes the cost of the second operation that we are going to perform. And each line i of n subsequent lines contains the integer describing a of i. So let's have a look at the sample input. So n value, which is like, uh, it is the value that we have is one, okay? And the x value, which is the cost of first operation is going to be one. Cost of second operation is also going to be one. There's an array that we have is one, one, and one. We have to select a sub array in a way. So for the first operation, you are going to subtract one from here. And in the second operation, you are going to basically like uh, assign, get that i value and perform the operation so that we can assign it to the zero. So if you look at it, so, and then we are going to find the minimum cost. So if you look at it, all the elements that are triple one only, so if you just select the sub array of all the entire array as it is and decide to perform one first operation 
So by reducing each element minus one, we will get the values as zero, zero, zero. So by performing one operation, where the cost of that operation is going to be one, and uh, we will get all the elements that are desired as all the elements of the matrix are going to be zero, and that is the minimum cost. So there could be like, uh, what is the other cost? Like what you can do is you can uh, split that, only you can pick two elements, you can perform the subtraction, you can take this and uh, then let's say here first you can make this two zeros and for the second one you can perform the second operation where you will get like a of two and assign it to zero. So this may lead for the first operation the cost will be one, for the second operation the cost will be 10. So also one, so in this example the cost here it is going to be combined as a two. But what is the minimum cost that we have where we select the all the elements and by performing or subtracting one from each element, we are going to get all the elements of zero. But in case, let's say if you have something like one, one and uh, two, if this kind of a scenario that we have, in that case, by subtracting one from these two elements, we, it may cost us one operation. And then here the next value we will have like zero, zero and one after performing the first step. In order to make it again zero, we will use the second operation where the cost is going to be one. So in that case, the minimum cost will be two here. Okay, so this is how you're going to find the minimum cost that is required. So as the values of those array changes, so there might be a lot of like uh, in some of the test cases that we can see, the second operation cost might be different. So either it could be like, uh, 10 or something or 5 or something. So in that case, you need to make sure like what is the minimum operation that we are going to find. So this is the question that you are going to solve and let us know in the comment section so that we will review it and the top three commenters are going to get Prevent Star Prime for free of cost. So basically you can choose uh, C, C++, Java or Python, any programming language that you need. So in order to solve this, you can choose that. So here you can see in one of the test cases that we have where and the second operation cost like uh, 10 here, right? So that is what I was talking about. So in the first operation here, the array only we have one element. So in single operation, we can find that with the minimum cost. If you choose to perform the second operation by assigning like A of zero equal to zero, in that case, this would have cost us 10. So based on like which operation that you are going to select, the aim or the goal that we have is we have to do that with the minimum cost of that. So the algorithmic code that you're going to write, let us know in the comment section. And as I said, the top three commenters on this video will get the Prepinsta Prime for free. That's it for the video. I will see you up ahead in the next one.